The Taming of the Shrew, Scene 1, Before an Alehouse, on a Heath. Enter Hostess and Sly. Sly. I'll fees you, in faith, Hostess, a pair of stocks, you rogue. Sly. Ye are a baggage, the Slys are no rogues. Look in the Chronicles, we came in the Richard Conqueror. Therefore, Pacchus, Palabras, let the world slide, Sessa, Hostess, you will not pay for the glasses you have burst? Sly. No, not a denier. Go by Geronimy. Go to thy cold bed and warm thee. Hostess, I know my remedy. I must fetch the third borrow. Exit. Sly. Third or fourth or fifth borrow. I'll answer him by law. I'll not budge an inch. Boy, let him come and kindly falls asleep. Horns winded, enter a lord from hunting with his train. Lord, huntsman, I charge thee, tender well my hounds. Brock Merriman, the poor cur is embossed, and couple clouder with the deep mouthed Brock. Sawst thou not, boy, how silver made it good at the hedge corner in the coldest fault? I would not lose the dog for twenty pound. First Huntsman. Why, Bellman is as good as he, my lord. He cried upon it at the merest loss, and twice today picked out the dullest scent. Trust me, I take him for the better dog. Lord, thou art a fool, if Echo were as fleet. I would esteem him worth a dozen such. But sup them well, and look unto them all. Tomorrow I intend to hunt again. First Huntsman. I will, Lord. Lord, what's here? One dead or drunk? See, doth he breathe? Second Huntsman. He breathes, my Lord. Were he not warmed with ale? This were a bed, but cold to sleep so soundly. Lord, O monstrous beast, how like a swine he lies. Grim death, how foul and loathsome is thine image. Sirs, I will practice on this drunken man. What think you if he were conveyed to bed, wrapped in sweet clothes, rings put upon his fingers, a most delicious banquet by his bed, and brave attendants near him when he wakes? Would not the beggar then forget himself? First Huntsman. Believe me, Lord, I think he cannot choose. Second Huntsman. It would seem strange unto him when he waked. Lord. Even as a flattering dream or worthless fancy, then take him up and manage well the jest, carry him gently to my fairest chamber, and hang it round with all my wanton pictures, balm his foul head and warm distilled waters, and burn sweet wood to make the lodging sweet, procure me music ready when he wakes, to make a dulcet and a heavenly sound. And if he chance to speak, be ready straight, and with a low submissive reverence, say, What is it your honor will command? Let one attend him with a silver basin, full of rose water, and be strewed with flowers. Another bear the ewer, the third a diaper, and say, Wilt please your lordship cool your hands? Someone be ready with a costly suit, and ask him what apparel he will wear. Another tell him of his hounds and horse, and that his lady mourns at his disease, persuade him that he hath been lunatic. And when he says he is, say that he dreams, for he is nothing but a mighty lord. This do and do it kindly, gentle sirs. It will be past time passing excellent, if it be husbanded with modesty. First Huntsman, my lord, I warrant you we will play our part, as he shall think by our true diligence. He is no less than what... He we say he is. Lord, take him up gently and to bed with him, and each one to his office when he wakes. Some bear out sly, a trumpet sounds. Sirrah, go see what trumpet tis that sounds. Exit, serving men. Belike, some noble gentleman, that means traveling some journey to repose him here. Re-enter, serving men. How now, who is it? Servant, and please your honor, Players that offer service to your lordship, Lord, bid them come near. Enter players. Now, fellows, you are welcome. Players, we thank your honor, Lord. Do you intend to stay with me tonight? 
a player. So please, your lordship, to accept our duty. Lord, with all my heart, this fellow I remember. Since once he played a farmer's eldest son, "'Twas where you wooed the gentlewoman so well. "'I have forgot your name, but sure, "'that part was aptly fitted and naturally performed. "'A player. "'I think twas Soto that your honor means. "'Lord, tis very true, thou didst it excellent. "'Well, you are come to me in a happy time. "'The rather, for I have some sport in hand, "'wherein your cunning can assist me much. "'There is a lord will hear you play tonight, "'but I am doubtful of your modesties.' lest over eyeing of his odd behavior, for yet his honor never heard a play. You break into some merry passion, and so offend him, for I tell you, sirs, if you should smile, he grows impatient. A player. Fear not, my lord, we can contain ourselves, were he the veriest antic in the world. Lord, go, sirrah, take them to the buttery, and give them friendly welcome every one. Let them want nothing that my house affords, exit one with the players. Sirrah, go you to Bartholomew, my page, and see him dressed in all suits like a lady. That done, conduct him to the drunkard's chamber, and call him Madame, do him obeisance. Tell him from me, as he will win my love. He bears himself with honorable action, such as he hath observed in noble ladies." unto their lords by them accomplished. Such duty to the drunkard let him do with soft low tongue and lowly courtesy. And say, What is't your honor will command, wherein your lady and your humble wife may show her duty and make known her love, and then with kind embracements, tempting kisses, and with declining head into his bosom, bid him shed tears as being overjoyed to see her noble lord restored to health who for this seven years hath esteemed him no better than a poor and loathsome beggar and if the boy have not a woman's gift to rain a shower of commanded tears an onion will do well for such a shift which in a napkin being close conveyed shall in despite enforce a watery eye See this dispatched with all the haste thou canst, and and I'll give thee more instructions. Exit a serving man. I know the boy will well usurp the grace, voice, gait, and action of a gentle woman. I long to hear him call the drunkard husband, and how my men will stay themselves from laughter. When they do homage to this simple peasant, all in to counsel them, haply my presence, may well abate the over-merry spleen, which otherwise would grow into extremes. Exunt. Scene 2. A bedchamber in the Lord's house. Enter a loft sly with attendants, some with apparel, others with basin, and ewer and appurtenances, and lord. Sly. For God's sake, a pot of small ale, first servant. Will please your lordship drink a cup of sack, second servant. Will please your honor taste of these conserves third servant what rement will your honor wear today sly i am christophero sly call not me honor nor lordship i need your drink sack in my life and if you ev- and if you give me any conserves give me conserves of beef near ask me what rement i'll wear for i have no more doublets than backs no more stockings than legs nor more nor no more shoes than feet Nay, sometimes more feet than shoes, or such shoes as my toes look through the over-leather. Lord, heaven, cease this idle humor in your honor. Oh, that a mighty man of such descent, of such, of such possessions and so high esteem, should be infused with so foul a spirit. Sly, what would make me mad? Am I not Christopher? Sly, old sons, son of Burton Heath, by birth a peddler, by education a card maker, by transmutation a bear herd, and now by present profession a tinker. Ask Marion Hackett, the fat ale wife of Wincott, if she know me not, if she say I am not fourteen pence, on the score for sheer ale, score me up for the lyingest knave in Christendom. What? I am not bestraught. Here's third servant. Oh, this it is that makes your lady mourn, second servant. Oh, this it is that makes your servants droop, Lord. 
Hence comes it that your kindred shuns your house as beaten hence by your strange lunacy. O noble Lord, bethink thee of thy birth, call home thy ancient thoughts from banishment, and banish hence these abject lowly dreams. Look how thy servants do attend on thee, each in his office ready at thy beck. Wilt thou have music? Hark, Apollo plays music, and twenty caged nightingales do sing, or wilt thou sleep? We'll have thee to a couch, softer and sweeter than the lustful bed, on purpose trimmed up for Semiramis. Say thou wilt walk, will we will bestrew the ground, or wilt thou ride? Thy horses shall be trapped, their harness studded all with gold and pearl. Dost thou love hawking? Thou hast hawks will soar above the morning lark, or wilt thou hunt? Thy hounds shall make the welkin answer them, and fetch shrill echoes from the hollow earth. First servant. Say thou wilt course thy greyhounds are as swift as breathed stags, a fleeter than the roe. Second servant. Dost thou love pictures? We will fetch thee straight, Adonis, painted by a running brook, and Cytheria, all in sedges hid, which seem to move and wanton with her breath. Even as the waving sedges play with wind, Lord, we'll show the Io as she was a maid, and how she was beguiled and surprised, as lively painted as the deed was done. Third servant, or Daphne roaming through a thorny wood, scratching her legs that one shall swear she bleeds, and at that sight shall sad Apollo weep, so workmanly the blood and tears are drawn. Lord, thou art a lord, and nothing but a lord. Thou hast a lady far more beautiful than any woman in this waning age. First servant, until the tears that she hath shed for thee. Like envious floods or run her lovely face, she was the fairest creature in the world, and yet she is inferior to none. Sly, am I a lord, and have I such a lady, or do I dream, or have I dreamed till now? I do not sleep, I see, I hear, I speak, I smell sweet savors, and I feel soft things. Upon my life I am a lord indeed, and not a tinker nor Christophero, sly. Well, bring our lady hither to our sight, and once again, O oh, a pot owed the smallest ale. Second servant. Will it please your mightiness to wash your hands? Oh, how we joy to see your wit restored. Oh, that once more you knew but what you are. These fifteen years you have been in a dream. Or we, or when you waked, so waked as if you slept. Sly. These fifteen years by my fay a goodly nap. But did I never speak of all that time? First servant. Oh yes, my lord, but very idle works. For though you there, for though you lay here in this goodly chamber, yet would you say ye were beaten out of door and rail upon the hostess of the house, and say you were you would present her at the leet because she brought stone jugs and no sealed courts. Sometimes you would call out for Sicily Hackett. Sly, I, the woman's mate of the house, third servant. Why, sir, you know no house, nor no such maid, nor no such men as you have reckoned upon, as Stephen Sly and did John Knapps of Greece, and Peter Turf and Henry Pimpernel, and twenty more such names and men as these, which never were, nor no man ever saw, Sly. Now, Lord, be thanked for my good amends, all, amen. Sly, I thank thee, thou shalt not lose by it. Enter the page as a lady with attendance. Page, how fares my noble lord? Sly, Mary, I fare well, for here is cheer enough. Where is my wife? Page, here, noble lord, what is thy will with her? Sly, are you my wife and will not call me husband? My men should call me lord. I am your good man. Page, my husband and my lord, my lord and husband, I am your wife in all obedience. Sly, I know it well. What must I call her, lord? Madame. Sly, else madame or Joan, madame. Lord, madame, and nothing else, so lords call ladies. Sly, madame wife, they say that I have dreamed and slept above some fifteen year or more. Page, I, and the time seems thirty unto me, being all this time abandoned from your bed. Sly, "'Tis much, servants, leave me and her alone, madame, and dress you and come now to bed. Page, 
Thrice, noble lord, let me entreat of you to pardon me yet for a night or two, or if not so, until the sun be set, for your physicians have expressly charged, in peril to incur your former milady, that I should yet absent me from your bed. I hope this reason stands for my excuse. Sly. I it stands so that I may hardly tarry so long, but I would be loath to fall into my dreams again. I will therefore tarry in despite of the flesh and the blood. Enter a messenger. Messenger. Your honors as, play, uh, your honors as players, heeding your amendment, are come to play a pleasant comedy, for so your doctors hold it very meet. Seeing too much sadness hath congealed your blood, and melancholy is the nurse of frenzy. Therefore they thought it good you hear a play, and frame your mind to mirth and merriment, which bars a thousand harms and lengthens life. Sly. Mary, I will. Let them play it. Is not a comedy a Christmas gambled or a tumbling trick? Page. No, my good lord. It is more pleasing stuff. Sly. What? Household stuff. Page. It is a kind of history. Sly. Well, well, see, come, madame wife, sit by my side. And let the world slip. We shall near be younger. Flourish. Act 1 Scene 1. Padua a public place. Enter Lucentio and his man Trenio. Lucentio. Trenio, since for the great desire I had to see fair Padua, nursery of arts, I am arrived for fruitful Lombardy, the pleasant garden of great Italy, and by my father's love and leave and am armed with his good will and thy good company, my trusty servant, well approved and all. Here let us breathe and haply institute a course of learning and indigenous studies, ingenious studies. Pisa, renowned for grave citizens, gave me my being and my father first, a merchant of great traffic through the world. Vincentino, come of Bentivoli, Vincentino's son brought up in Florence. It shall be come to serve all hopes conceived, to deck his fortune with his virtuous deeds, and therefore trainio for the time I study. Virtue and that part of philosophy will I apply that treats of happiness by virtue specially to be achieved. Tell me thy mind, for I have peace left, and am to Padua come, as he that leaves, a shallow plash to plunge him in the deep, and with satiety seeks to quench his thirst. Trenio, me perdonato, gentle master mine. I am in all affected as yourself, glad that you thus continue your resolve, to suck the sweets of sweet philosophy. Only good master, while we do admire this virtue and this moral discipline, let's be no stoics nor no stocks, I pray, or so devote to Aristotle's checks as Ovid be an outcast, quite abjured, balk logic with acquaintance that you have, and practice rhetoric in your common talk, music and poesy used to quicken you, the mathematics and the metaphysics, fall to them as you find your stomach serves you, no profit grows where is no pleasure tain. In brief, sir, study what you most affect. Lucentio. Gramercis, Trenio. Well dost thou advise, if Biondello thou wert come ashore, we could at once put us in readiness, and take a lodging fit to entertain such friends as time in Padua shall beget. But stay a while, what company is this? Trenio, master, some show to welcome us to town. Enter Baptista, Catharina, Bianca, Gremio, and Hortensio, Lucentio, and Trenio stand by. Baptista, gentlemen, importune me no farther, for how I am firmly am resolved, you know, that it is not bestow my youngest daughter before I have a husband for the elder. If either of you both love Katharina, because I know you well and love you well, leave shall you have to court her at your pleasure. Gremio, aside, to cart her rather, she's too rough for me. There, there, Hortensio. Will you any wife? Katharina, I pray you, sir, is it your will to make a stale of me amongst these mates? Hortensio, mates, maid, how mean you that? No mates for you, unless you were of gentler, milder, milder mold. Katharina, Faith, sir, you shall never need to fear. I was it 
is not half way to her heart, but if it were, doubt not her care should be to comb your noddle with a three-legged stool, and paint your face and use you like a fool. Hortensio, from all such devils, good lord, deliver us. Gremio, and me too, good lord. Tranio, hush, master, here's some good pastime toward. That wench is stark mad, or wonderful froward. Licentio, but in the other silence do I see maids mild behavior and sobriety. Peace, Tranio. Tranio, well said, master. Mum, and gaze your fill. Baptista, gentlemen, that I may soon make good what I have said, Bianca. Get you in, and let it not displease thee, good Bianca. For I will love thee near the less, my girl, Catherina. A pretty pea, it is best. Put finger in the eye, and she knew why. Bianca, sister, Content you in my discontent, sir, to your pleasure humbly I subscribe. My books and instruments shall be my company, on them to took and practice by myself. Lucentio, hark, Tranio, thou mayst hear Minerva speak, Hortensio. Signor Battista, will you be so strange? Sorry, am I that our good will affects Bianca's grief, Gremio? Why will you moo her up, Signor Baptista, for this fiend of hell, and make her bear the penance of her tongue? Baptista, gentlemen, content ye, I am resolved. Go in, Bianca. Exit, Bianca. And for I know she taketh most delight in music, instruments, and poetry. Schoolmasters will I keep within my house, fit to instruct her youth. If you, Hortensio, or Signor Gremio, you know any such... Prefer them hither for two cunning men. I will be very kind and liberal to mine own children in good bringing up. And so farewell, Katharina. You may stay, for I have more to commune with Bianca. Exit. Katharina. Why? And I must. I trust. I may go too. May I not? What? Shall I be appointed hours as though belike? I knew not what to take and what to leave ha exit gremio you may find you may go to the devil's dam your gifts are so good here's none will hold you their love is not so great hortensio but we may blow our nails together and fast it fairly out our cakes dough on both sides, farewell, yet for the love I bear, my sweet Bianca, if I can by any means light on a fit man to teach her that wherein she delights, I will wish him to her father. Hortensio. So will I, Signor Gremio, but to word I pray, though the nature of our quarrel yet never brooked parley. Know now upon advance, it toucheth us both that we may yet again have access to our fair mistress and be happy rivals in Bianca's love to labor and affect one thing specially. What's that, I pray? Mary, sir, to get a husband for her sister. Gremio, I say a husband. I say a Will. his youngest free for a husband and then to have to a fresh sweet Bianca happy man be his dole he that runs fastest gets the ring how say you Signor Gremio? Gremio I am indeed and would I have given him the best horse in Padua to begin his wooing
true. I never thought it possible or likely, but see, while idly I stood looking on, I found the effect of love in idleness. And now in plainness do confess to thee that Perhaps you marked not what's the pith of all. Lucentio. Oh yes, I saw sweet beauty in her face, such as the daughter of Agnor had, that made great Jove to humble him to her hand. When with his knees he kissed the Cretan strand, Trenio, saw you no more. Marked you not how your sister began to scold and raise up such a storm that mortal ears. Mary am I, sir, and now tis plotted. Lucentio. I have it, Trenio. Trenio. Master, for my hand, both our inventions meet and jump in one. Lucentio. Tell me thine first. Trenio. You will be schoolmaster and undertake the teaching of the maid. Nor can we lie distinguished by our faces for man or master. Then it follows thus, thou shalt be master Tranio in my stead. Keep house and port and servants as I should. It your pleasure is, and I am tied to be obedient, for so your father charged me at our parting. Be serviceable to my son, quoth he, although I think twas in another sense. I am content to be Lucentio, because so well I love Lucentio. Lucentio, Trenio be so, because Lucentio loves, and let me be a slave to achieve that maid. Wait, you on him, I charge you as becomes, while I make way from hence to save my life. You understand me? Biondello, I, sir, ne ear a wit, Lucentio, and not a jot of Tranio in your mouth. Tranio is changed into...
next wish after that Resentio indeed had Baptista's youngest daughter, but Sarah, not for my sake, but your master's I advise. You use your manners discreetly in all kinds of companies. When I am alone, why then I am Tranio, but in all places else your master Lucentio. Tranio, let's go. One more thing rests that thyself execute to make one among these wooers. If thou ask me why sufficeth, my reasons are both good and weighty. Exunt. The presenters above speak. First servant. My lord, you nod. You do not mind the play? Sly. Yes, by St. Anne do I. A good matter, surely. Comes there any more of it? Page, my lord, tis but begun. Sly, tis a very excellent piece of work, madame lady. Would twere done, they sit and mark. Scene two, Padua, before Hortensio's house. Enter Petruccio and his man Grumio. Petruccio, Verona, for I, while, for a while I take my leave to see my friends in Padua, but of all, my best beloved and approved friend Hortensio, and I trow this is his house. Here, Sirrah, Grumio, knock. I say, Grumio, knock, sir. Whom should I knock? Is there man has rebused your worship? Petruccio, villain. I say, knock me here soundly. Grumio, knock you here, sir. Why, sir, what am I, sir, that I should knock you here, sir? Petruccio, villain. I say, knock me at this gate, and wrap me well, or I'll knock your knave's pate. Grumio, my master is grown quarrelsome. I should knock you first, and then I know after who comes by the worst. Petruccio, will it not be fair faith, sirrah, and you'll not knock? I'll ring it. I'll try how you can soul fa and sing it. He rings him by the ears. Grumio, help, masters, help. My master is mad. Petruccio, now knock when I bid you, Sirrah villain. Enter Hortensio. Hortensio, how now? What's the matter, my old friend Grumio and my good friend Petruccio? How do you all at Verona? Petruccio, Signor Hortensio, come you to part the fray? Con tutto il cuor ben travato? May I say, Hortensio, alla nostra casa ben venuto molto onorato, Signor mio Petruccio. Rise, Grumio, rise. We will compound this quarrel. Grumio, nay, tis no matter, sir, what he leages in Latin. If this be not a lawful case for me to leave his service, look you, sir, he bid me knock him and rap him soundly. Sir, well, was it fit for a servant to use his master so, being perhaps for all I see, two and thirty a pip out, whom would to God I had well knocked at first? Then had not Grumio come by the worst? Petruccio, a senseless villain, good Hortensio. I bade the rascal knock upon your gate, and could not get him for my heart to do it. Grumio, knock at the gate, O heavens, spake you not these words plain, Sirrah? Knock me here, rap me here, knock me well, and knock me soundly? And come you now with knocking at the gate? Petruccio, Sirrah, be gone, or talk not, I advise you. Hortensio, Petruccio, patience, I am Grumio's pledge. Why, this a heavy chance twixt him and you, your ancient, trusty, pleasant servant, Grumio? And tell me now, sweet friend, what happy gale blows you to Padua here from old Verona? Petruccio, such wind as scatters young men through the world to seek their fortunes farther than at home, where small experience grows, but in a few, Signor Hortensio, thus it stands with me, Antonio, my father is deceased, and I have thrust myself into this maze, happily to wive and thrive as best I may. Crowns in my purse I have and goods at home, and so am come abroad to see the world. Hortensio, Petruccio, shall I then come roundly to thee, and wish thee to a shrewd, ill-favored wife? Thou'st Thank me but a little for my counsel, and yet I'll promise thee she shall be rich, and very rich, but thou art too much my friend, and I'll not wish thee to her. A tooth in her head, though she have as many diseases, as two and fifty horses. Why? Nothing comes amiss. So many comes withal. Hortensio, Petruccio, 
Since we are stepped thus far in, I will continue that I broached in jest. I can, Petruchio, help thee to a wife with wealth enough and young and beauteous, brought up as best becomes a gentlewoman. Her only fault, and that is false enough, is that she is intolerable, cursed, and shrewd, and froward, so beyond all measure that were my state far worse than it is, I would not wed her for a mine of gold. Petruchio, Hortensio, peace, thou knowest not gold's effect. Tell me her father's name, and tis enough. For I will board her, though she chide as loud as thunder when the clouds in autumn crack. Hortensio, her father is Baptista Minola, an affable and courteous gentleman. Her name is Catharina Minola, renowned in Padua for her scolding tongue. Petruchio, I know her father, though I know not her. And he knew my deceased father well. I will not sleep, Hortensio, till I see her. And therefore, let me be thus bold with you, to give you over at this first encounter, unless you will accompany me thither. Grumio, I pray you, sir, let him go while the humor lasts. Oh, my word, and she knew him as well as I do. She would think scolding would do little good upon him. She may perhaps call him half a score knaves or so. Why, that's nothing, and he begin once. He'll rail in his rope tricks. I'll tell you what, sir, and she stand him but a little. He will throw a figure in her face, and so disfigure her with it that she shall have no more eyes to see with all than a cat. You know him not, sir? Hortensio. Terry Petruchio, I must go with thee, for in Batista's keep my treasure is. He hath the jewel of my life in hold, his youngest daughter, beautiful Benaka, and with her withholds from me and other more suitors to her and rivals in my love. Supposing it a thing impossible for those defects I have before rehearsed, that ever Katerina will be wooed, Therefore, this order hath Baptista tain, that none shall have access unto Bianca, till Katharina the Cursed have got a husband, Grumio. Katharina the Cursed, a title for a maid of all titles the worst, Hortensio. Now shall my friend Petruchio do me grace, and offer me disguised in sober robes, to old Baptista, as a schoolmaster, well seen in music to instruct Bianca, that so I may, by this device, at least have leave and leisure to make love to her, and unsuspected court her by myself. Grumio, here's no knavery. See to beguile the old folks, how the young folks lay their heads together. Enter Grumio and Lucentio disguised. Master, master, look about you. Who goes here? Ha! Who goes there? Ha! Hortensio. Peace, Grumio. It is the rival of my love, Petruchio. Stand by a while, Grumio. A proper stripling and an amorous, Grumio. Oh, very well. I have persuaded the note. Hark you, sir. I'll have them very fairly bound. All books of love. See that at any hand, and see you read no other lectures to her. You understand me over and besides, Signor Battista's liberality. I'll mend it with a largess. Take your paper, too, and let me have them very well perfumed. For if, for she is sweeter than perfume itself, to whom they go to, what will you read to her? Lucentio, what e'er I read to you, I'll plead for you. As for my patron, stand you so assured as firmly as yourself were still in place? Yea, and perhaps with more successful words than you, unless you were a scholar, sir. Grumio, oh, this learning, what a thing it is. Grumio, oh, this woodcock, what an ass it is. Petruchio, peace, sirrah. Hortensio, Grumio, mum, God save you, Signor Gremio. Grumio, and you are well met, Signor Hortensio. Throw you whither I am going to Baptista Manola. I promise to inquire carefully about a schoolmaster for the fair Bianca. And by good fortune I have lighted well on this young man for learning and behavior, fit for her turn, well read in poetry and other books, good ones, I warrant ye. Hortensio, tis well, and I have met a gentleman, hath promised me to help him, help me to another, a fine musician to instruct our mistress. So shall I no wit, be behind in duty to fair Bianca, so beloved of me. Gremio, beloved of me, 
and that my deeds shall prove Grumio, and that his bags shall prove Hortensio. Grumio, tis now no time to vent our love. Listen to me, and if you speak me fair, I'll tell you news indifferent, good for either. Here is a gentleman whom by chance I met, upon agreement from us to his liking, will undertake to woo cursed Katharina, yea, and to marry her if her dowry please. Gremio, so say, so done as well. Hortensio, have you told him all her faults? Petruchio, I know she is an irksome, brawling scold. If that be all, masters, I hear no harm. Gremio, no sayst me so, friend. What countryman? Petruchio, born in Verona, old Antonio's son. My father dead, my fortune lives for me. And I do hope good days and long to see. Gremio, oh sir, such a life with such a wife were strange. But if you have a stomach to it, I, God's name, you shall have me assisting you in all. But will you woo this wildcat, Petruchio? Will I live, Grumio? Will he woo her, eh, or I'll hang her, Petruchio? Why came I hither but to that intent? Think you a little din can daunt mine ears? Have I not in my time heard lions roar? Have I not heard the sea puffed up with winds, rage like an angry boar chafed with sweat? Have I not heard great ordnance in the field, and heaven's artillery thunder in the skies? Have I not in a pitched battle heard loud larums, neighing, neighing steeds, and trumpets clang? And do you tell me of a woman's tongue that gives not half so great a blow to her as will a chestnut in a farmer's fire? Tush, tush, fear boys with hugs. Grumio, for he fears none. Gremio, Hortensio, hark! This gentleman is happily arrived. My mind presumes for his own good and ours. Hortensio, I promised we would be contributors and bear his charging of wooing whatsoever. Gremio, and so we will, provided that he win her. Grumio, I would... I were as sure of a good dinner. Enter Tranio, brave and biondello. Tranio. Gentlemen, God save you, if I may be, bo- may be bold. Tell me, I beseech you, which is the readiest way to the house of Signor Baptista Minola? Biondello. He that has the two fair daughters, ist he, ist he you mean? Tranio. Even he, Biondello. Gremio. Hark you, sir. You mean not her too? Trenio, perhaps him and her, sir. What have you to do? Petruchio. Not her that chides, sir, at any hand, I pray. Trenio. I love no chider, sir. Biondello, let's away. Lucentio. Well begun, Trenio. Hortensio. Sir, a word ere you go. Are you a suitor to the maid you talk of? Yea or no? Trenio. And if I be, sir, is it any offense? Gremio. No. If without more words you will get you hence, Trinio, why, sir, I pray, are not the streets as free for me as for you, Gremio? But so is not she, Trinio, for what reason? I beseech you, Gremio, for this reason, if you'll know that she is the choice love of Signor Gremio, Hortensio, that she is the chosen of Signor Hortensio, Trinio, softly, my masters, if you be gentlemen. Do me this right, hear me with patience. Baptista is a noble gentleman, to whom my father is not all unknown. And were his daughter fairer than she is, she may, she may more suitors have and me for one. Fair Lita's daughter had a thousand wooers. Then, well, one more may fair Bianca have, and so she shall, Lucentio, shall make one, though Paris came in hope to speed alone. Gremio, what? This gentleman will out-talk us all. Lucentio, sir, give him head. I know he'll prove a jade. Petruchio, Hortensio, to what end are all these words? Hortensio, sir, let me be so bold as ask you. Did you yet ever see Baptista's daughter? Trenio, no, sir, but here I do that he hath two. The one as famous for a scolding tongue, as is the other for beauteous modesty. Petruchio, sir, sir, the first for me, let her go by. Gremio, yea, leave that labor to great Hercules, and let it be more than Alcides twelve. Petruchio, sir, understand you this of me in sooth, the youngest to daughter 
whom you hearken for her father keeps from all access of suitors, and will not promise her to any man, until the elder sister first be wed, the younger then is free and not before. Trenio, if it be so, sir, that you are the man, must steed us all, and me amongst the rest, and if you break the ice and do this feat, achieve the elder, set the younger free, for our access, whose hap shall be to have her, will not so graceless be to be ingrate? Hortensio, sir, you say well, and well you do conceive, and since you do profess to be a suitor, you must, as we do, gratify this gentleman, to whom we all rest generally beholding. Trenio, sir, I shall not be slack in sign whereof. Please, ye we may contrive this afternoon, and quaff carouses to our mistress's health, and do as adversaries do in law, strive mightily, but eat and drink as friends. Grumio, Biondello. Oh, excellent motion. Fellows, let's be gone. Hortensio, the motion's good indeed, and be it so. Petruccio, I shall be your benvenuto. Exunt. Act 2.